you're all so nice. I think I'm, let's just sit down. <laughs> uh, I'm on the tail end of a cold. I did the old test and all that stuff. I made it. I think it was just something my partner wanted to share with me. <laughs> and so I allowed him to care for me for this past week. Just as pants, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, a few minutes uh, when we get to the sharing time. A wonderful meeting yesterday, and so that really worked into um, how I at least see the gospel reading. So I will share the news about that meeting. Uh, are there any other announcements that folks have? <laughs> Look at her eye. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to again thank all the ladies who made cookies. Maybe some of the gentlemen made cookies. Is that a possibility? No, I didn't I think it was <laughs> Did you want uh, each? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, we've got 33 yeah. candies to sell, so yeah. now the job is to get people out to buy them. So yeah. pass the word to everybody and uh, encourage people to come out. What is the word? The bake sale on the 26th of November. There you are. Nine till two. <laughs> is it a craft and bake sale or just a so, bake sale? So now we're moving on to our next project. <laughs> Would there be crafts? Would there be crafts? Oh! Oh, oh. oh right, that's it. On my calendar. Oh, and, and might there be one down the road on the same day? <laughs> Are you interested? Cooks and. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, what's, cook and um, what's the other one? Edith Rankin. Oh. All the churches are all together next, next week. Next oh, week. next week. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I can't Here. tell you about yesterday. Watch it now. Her face is getting a little red. <laughs> <laughs> Well, being okay. harassed. Okay. 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 Let's move on to the next project. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the next project is socks for the homeless. And I put a basket out there uh, for you to put your socks in. And again, you know, uh, new or gently used. And I mean gently. Used. Oh, okay. Yes, I know. Sometimes we have a overused. I, I, I have a pair for you. Oh, I don't want them if they're really overused. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do they have dog hair on them? <laughs> <laughs> How could they not? <laughs> anyway, that's our next project, and it will run until uh, the first Sunday in December. Is it fourth? Fourth. Yeah. Okay. That's great. okay. Yeah. So we're all on board. Yeah. And then we'll look at December. <laughs> so don't get complacent. Don't get <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a brave person to face that harass. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, hello, Zoom. <laughs> want to um, yeah, I think that's probably it for announcements. So, Kidoki. And apparently, I was supposed to be panicking at the beginning because we didn't have a PowerPoint here, okay. but <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> now, it would be helpful if it's the same as the one that I have. <laughs> okay, so hello, greetings. And, oh, it's a responsive greeting. Let me see where this is. Go to the next and we'll see where it is. Okay, yes. yes. <coughs> Welcome in the name of the Christ. Well, well to the 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 that was good. We actually had a, I think I told you that. We had a practice run of those words over at Riverside. 
still pretty wild. But we, we will get there. Welcome to this place of retreat and refuge, worship and wonder. Welcome to this place. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Let us prepare. Okay, maybe we should come back. Powerful. It is. We're thrown off by this. I did tell people that I. I am. No, no. It is. Yes, I never talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this. Yes, I can. 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 Yes, I the reconciliation uh, stories. Uh, and so, um, um, this story of in the head, stories. Um, so, Judy um, uh, Springer story has taken it uh, word for Judy, word. These are the words has taken, uh, word for in the documentations uh, of the stories of reconciliation. The so, of the uh, of reconciliation. that's why they sound uh, that's why they like, sound a sound like a child's words. Like a child. And we all, there was a crowd when we got there, a crowd of, you know, other students. And we went to the registration They gave us, told us which dorm to go. And and there was a person standing, but the kids were, you know, lining up and this person took me to the line. And when the line was full, I guess when we were, they took us to the dorm. We had our numbers and a bed number. And she told us to settle down. I guess when we well, I wasn't understanding just because it was English. We had our numbers. I thought, but I followed, you know. And she told watch, watch everybody. And she took my hand and guided me to the bed. And the number showed me what number I was. Watch. Watch number four. And we had to respond number four. And so that's how it was then. Like number, number four. And we had to respond. I'm not sure if there's. Yeah. So the call to action. So the call to action. On the reports. <laughs> on the reports. Number 55. Number 55. And we call upon all levels of government to provide reports or any current data requested by the National Council for the Reconciliation. So that it can report on the progress towards reconciliation. The reports or data would include, but not be limited to, the progress on eliminating the overrepresentation of Aboriginal children in custody over the next decade. It seems a bit choppy to just sort of leave it there, but I think understanding um, our relationships with First Nations folks um, is really paramount to reigniting our understanding of our faith. We will be doing our um, statement of faith, uh, and I think the broader that we can paint that brush, and I think the, the broader we live into who we are, the that's a congregation and a domination. That's a congregation and a domination. I will share that yesterday we did write it. I will share that yesterday. I was tasked with that task and I failed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Phil had to come to my rescue. <laughs> uh, so then I think it's really like an ordained minister's job, but we'll see. You're doing fine. Oops. We like this candle. candle as a symbol of the light of Christ, which cannot be held back by distance, but shines in each one of us, no matter where we are.
and our statement of faith. Please join together as we recite the statement. We are not a we live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus of the Word made flesh to reconcile the kingdom who works in us and others. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone now. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our call to worship. We are to do this responsibly. You're the underlines, and I'm the other. So let's go. The Lord is continually creating something new. We are part of that creation. We live, we teach, we love. Through all the Lord this, is God is with us. Praise be to God who continually blesses us. Through all this, our hearts, our voices, and our spirits, so we sing God's praises. Praise be to God and our opening prayer. In the midst of continual change, God remains steadfast in God's love for us. God is creating something new, new heaven and a new earth. Each day offers newness of hope and faith. Let us open our hearts and our spirits to God's creative words that we may learn, grow, and serve as effective witnesses to God's love and power. Amen. And our opening hymn, opening for one worship the Lord. Thank you. 
of grace. God is faithful to us. We are beloved of God. We are beloved of God and recipients of God's love and blessing. Rejoice, children of God. For God's mercy for every May these words of scripture give us new sight, new vision. May we see the new, the abundance of our lives and the opportunities we have to share with our neighbors. And our first scripture is the voice of United we read when we do it and respond to it. And it's Isaiah 12. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all nations. I will praise you, O God. Surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. With joy, we draw water from the wells of salvation. Make known God's deeds among the nations. Sing praises to God, whose work is glorious. Let it be known in all the earth. And our leaders. Before I read the scripture, I just would like to um, ask you in the coming weeks to keep my son Paul and his foster son 
Don't tell me a prayer. Paul has had don't tell since he was 36, seven years old. He's now 16. And a year, almost two years ago now, he lost his mother, who was on the reservation. Don't tell took him really hard. And of course, they wouldn't let him go from the funeral. They wouldn't let him on the reservation to go to the funeral, even though he came from the reservation. They have a lot of people. So he's been having a lot of trouble dealing with that. And then this week, then they find out that his young sister, she be 12, 13, um, has been taken to the hospital. So, He's now got to deal with that. And of course, he doesn't see them very often like he was that in the summertime. That Paul took him up to one day and they all gathered there. So he got to see them then. But he didn't see them right away. So he's really, is it really that close to them? But it still affects him because that's part of the thing. So he really needs lots of care. <clears throat> okay, so that's a one in two. Testify. So make up your minds not to be carrying fits and advance. 
Well, I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to understand or comprehend. You will be betrayed, you know, by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your faith. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Sure, Ministry of Music. Yes, there is. <laughs> I chose to talk about just a few more of the verses. Because um, it gets into some pretty heavy stuff, right? End of times kind of talk at the end of the Luke reading. And I really didn't feel called to that. I think because of the meeting that I went to yesterday. I think I was called to Look at the message that Jesus was giving. They were talking about the temple. And so I looked up the, some of this stuff about the temple. And apparently the renovations took like 80 years. Um, King Herod expanded the size of the temple, um, used absolutely the best marble, and there was all these... Um, on the walls, these tapestries that were the creme de la creme, if you were. And it was powerful and beautiful, and no wonder people were worshiping together there. I mean, it's much like here, right? I mean, look at the beauty and the 
Oh, it's the people in the church, right? That brings the glory and the beauty. <clears throat> and then he says, this will all be gone. There won't be one stone upon the other. And what the surprising piece, I guess, is they didn't question the fact that it was going to happen. They didn't say, are you sure, Jesus? What they said was, when, when, when will this happen? Because their faith in hearing Jesus' words was already so strong for them that the possibility that it wouldn't happen didn't even cross their minds. So they're wondering, A, when will it happen? And B, then what's left for us? And that's what resonated with me. It just um, kept playing on me about what is left for us. We often talk about our dying churches. How will we survive? Will we survive? What is left for us? And that passage gave me hope. It made me think that even if the way we worship, the places we worship changes, we will still be worshiping. We will still, like the Christ candle shows us, have our faith and our connection. Now, we might have to say this, as I said in the second Thessalonians, right? Um, we might have to um, come together and, and have busy hands. And apparently, that's pretty easy to get people to do that. If we ask, we ask, how many cans of cookies do we have? I mean, isn't that a beautiful thing? When you think of how um, there's a few people here and we have... 30, 40, 50, who knows, and there might be more coming, right? That we have, we're just at, we have, we're just the power and the energy, power and the energy. if we know where we're putting it. That's pretty awesome. So what was this meeting I was at yesterday? Well, it cut into my sleeping time, so it had to be important, right? <laughs> And it was probably a it was probably a three or four homes, three or four homes right because right? this, this is the uh, this I, I was the, thinking of this on the way here that this is the I was thinking of this on the way the flavor this is of the, our air freshness this, right as Canadians before COVID we always had halls I thought Man, mantolitis right <laughs> before COVID. You could always tell, like how how well people were by the presence of the halls and the halls. You could always tell. And so there we were gathered. And who were these people? This was the group that got together. Oh my gosh, months ago. And so there we talk about the possibility of a new style of shared ministry. We were there from four different congregations, and this particular meeting um, was in Moscow. Um, and so we met in each of the different churches. We gathered, and it was we were there when we first gathered. The first gathering we had it was at Riverside. It was a gathering of strangers. It was a gathering of people who didn't know each other very well. Was a gathering. You know, I think of the epistles where there's letters to all these little churches all over each place, trying to give encouragement, and yet they still have their own spaces, right? They have their own agendas, and so when we first met. We were pretty masked, I believe, at that time, and we were also, they have their 
little hesitant, a little fearful. And so, what is this going to do to our congregation? Is this going to lead to buildings closing and to just one place of meeting? And what about my history and my place and my church? And there was some of that. But there was also seeking to understand if there was a better way doing ministry that might ensure that small congregations, small rural congregations could continue to function and to have their own place, their continued place. Well, we've met four times now, and this was our first time in, in quite some time since the official start of the trial period. <clears throat> trial, I'm not sure whether I'll be found guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but trying to understand but try if it's working, if it's not working, if, it's if we're just doing it because we don't have another choice, if we're just my feeling was my feeling this is where it was. There is something special about what we have created. There's something special. There's something about the energy that comes with having a couple of different voices, but familiar voices up at the top. And sometimes they're down below, sometimes so that we don't have to be afraid of what's so happening up there. Afraid of that we are part, there, that we are part of, of each other. That, that there and is a way, even with different voices, different life histories, that our uniqueness is recognized, nourished cherished each congregation i think has shown a bit of a renewal in the energy in the connection with one another even if we're not meeting we're not meeting phil and i get each other you right we get to see you we get to engage with you and we get to then share that with the other congregation and we get to then share that and it wasn't just me it wasn't just feeling that. Everyone there, we talked about, okay, let's be as honest as we can be about how this might be unfolding. And yes, there were some concerns. There were um, concerns about pastoral care. How much do we need? Is it happening? Um, how do we reach out? And so we, we address that. There will be, check your mailboxes in the next little while. Uh, we will be sending out to everybody who we have. And so if you know of people whose addresses we should have, to be sending out a letter of just, how are you doing? We've either seen you or not seen you, or <clears throat> pastoral care is available, here's how you get it. You don't have to reach out yourself. You can reach out to somebody else, just, just as it's happened in the past, right? Phil doing Mondays here, Tuesdays at Odessa, and then I think Thursday, Friday, or, or Wednesday, Thursday, he works out of his office in the manse uh, for the other congregations. So there is availability, but sometimes we just don't know, right? So we need to be telling people. We talked a little bit about relationships and how that's working. And the challenges that people are facing. And once again, Phil told me <laughs> that when he was at Moscow, they said to him, you know, Eric comes down and talks to us. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> said he. So <laughs> he came down. He's been doing that. He's been coming down, but he has his tablet. Um, and I guess Tracy does that too. And somebody said to them, you know, Eric doesn't do it. That <laughs> so I, I don't think they're feeling threatened by that. It's just the difference of personality, the difference of style. And I think that people have been embracing that. Um, where will we go? We don't know particularly. We talked a little bit about money this time, right? That's always at the back of everybody's mind. Money this time, right? And because um, and East Camden is, that's um, Phil's East Camden, right? So they're paying his salary, right? So if we did this in a more global way for a longer time, it looked like something like so if we they would save $2,000 a month and we would still be paying less than we paid. So economically, and we, it appears there is benefit, right? Because that was part of the fears at the beginning. And part of the fears of East Camden was, are we going to lose Phil? Are we going to lose... Um, and part of the fear is going to burn Phil out and all that I kind of stuff. <clears throat> Nobody asked me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should have a slide. <clears throat> it's all about me. <laughs> Especially we should have a slide. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's all about interpretation. Right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, and that did happen because originally I was going to be preaching four Sundays a, week, a month, right? Yeah. Now I, Tracy steps um, in and, and so on. And that did happen because originally I was going to um, Yeah, and so. With now Peggy I'm taking over some of the administrative in. stuff, we've actually freed up Phil's hours. So those are all the kinds of um, underlying questions yeah. so that people were concerned with taking over some of the, of the travels, being here and being there. Um, Phil can do work here. There's internet, right? So um, the space doesn't really matter. And that was part of the, the glory of what we were sharing was... <laughs> Each place still maintains its importance. At first, it was Moscow that was most concerned, because they were the smallest. But there has been an increase in numbers. There has been a few. I mean, you know, when you start, one Sunday I was there, there was four people. So when there's 10, that's a pretty, you know, I, I'll do my math. Oh, that's thousands of percent <laughs> increase. Um, and the energy. That's thousands. There is some space for hope in all of this. Increase. It also takes some work, right? We talked about the idle hands, right? Well, there are no idle hands in a small group of churches. Mostly. It also takes some work. What do we need to do to let each church know? I guess this is part of it, right? To, to just do a little sharing every so often. What do No, not biblically related, perhaps. No, I guess this is. But life of the congregation related. Some of the things that have happened, people ask us, Phil and I, so how is this working for you? A new role for me, particularly. Um, and Phil always says to me, you know, well, you know, I took this on, I went to, I did all this. What about you? Phil always says to me, well, let's talk about Phil first, because he's not there. 
No, we'll talk about Phil because he talked about this has given him no, we'll renewed talk energy. About Phil because he talked about there is something powerful about coming to different places. There is meeting different people coming to different places. And they share stories and lives and energies. He did say that you were awfully quiet. That's <laughs> and now he'll know again, right? I forget the screen is being recorded. But... <laughs> and he, they asked me how I felt. And I will tell you that, you know, as you get older, Sometimes it's harder to make Sometimes brand new relationships. Brand but because of the kind of personality, I but because have, of the kind of people are the, the focus of who I am in the world. And so I have met wonderful people and so I have that I would consider close friends in each congregation. What a blessing. It, it's just so wonderful. There's something wonderful of when somebody comes through the door and says, Eric, there's something I tell you something. Right? <laughs> and of course, in the back of my mind, can I share it? Can I share it? <laughs> of course, the back of my mind. And they share. And so I think I shared with you that a month or two ago, somebody had gone skydiving. And then <laughs> Somebody had gone. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> but we can get a senior's discount Why? in Gananoque if we all Why? want to go skydiving. <laughs> so, so, in Gananoque. <laughs> or if somebody wants to be on the ground <laughs> watching us land. <laughs> <laughs> or if there are connections. <laughs> and it's, we forget. How there else are. we are. Connect. These four congregations is a pretty easy drive yeah. in lots of ways. I uh, realize that too. These four congregations is a pretty easy drive in lots of We ways. talked about ways of trying to bring four congregations together occasionally as well. Right? So look for, we haven't really set a date, but look for some kind of communal dinner. And then it was a progressive dinner so that we could be at each place. <laughs> We'd have to start early in the day, <laughs> and we'd probably have to have a nap time, and then not be too late so we could still see and drive, right? So, um, but there was energy, there was hope, there was a sense that we are doing something that we maybe we stumbled into it, but we think it's working. And if it doesn't feel like it's working, don't be afraid to name it. This is our place. This is our community. This is our journey in congregational life. And people want to hear. That was the other thing. People kept saying, if I hear anything, let's share it. Let's share it. Um, the good, the bad, the indifferent. Um, you know, whether it's Eric out in the parking lot saying something with the mic still on, <laughs> which apparently is quite famous now. <laughs> and somebody asked if it was on the Zoom, but I think the Zoom had ended. So, um, yeah. I hope that has opened you to possibilities. So the next time that we feel like um, we look at the finances maybe and we go, do we need to do another fundraiser? Let's remember that fundraising starts with fun, right? If we could just incorporate that and not worry about the actual dollars and cents but worry about, not worry about, celebrate the connections that we make with the communities. We talked about um, the ways that we can do that. And if we can get people from each congregation, right, doing a little something, 
so that we get to know them as, as people, uh, as fellow journeyers, that sense of community fills our souls, stirs our hearts, and makes this all worthwhile. That's probably enough. <laughs> but remind Phil that I was down here four or five times, and you just felt that energy and that connection. You see, there you go, and, and how important that was, and no color. So, <laughs> blessings. Amen. Let's continue. <laughs> And we're not doing a minute for mission this week. And so let's go into our, um, oh, we'll go into our hymn first. And I'll wait to see if I'm sitting down or standing. <laughs> And our offering, I'm not sure whether there's um, words for the hymn. This is a, we have to work this out, right? <laughs> I always have a little trouble with this. But, <clears throat> Phil, I guess is the brief message, but we need to oops, um, know that the abundance and the generosity of our spirit is what funds the church, right? It brings us into connection, into love. I'm still thinking of all these cans of cookies. <laughs> um, that what a blessing! And, <laughs> um, and so next it'll be socks. Those simple gestures are just such an example of love and connection and giving and generosity and inclusion, thinking of others who have less blessings. That's enough for the offer. Amen. We do have a Thank 
invitation to gather. Today we remember and are thankful that you are with us through everything, oh God. There is nothing. Oh, I didn't realize it was Jesus, but there's nothing we can truly rely on other than you. Let this act of giving be a sign that we trust you. Amen. And prayers to the people. Are there any prayer requests? <coughs> I, know. I think that the, that the peace on reconciliation, uh, we could have used Wilma's story. Uh, how complex these relationships are. And that people are working through them on a daily basis. And so... Um, families are still separated and are still trying to find ways of being connected. So I, I thank you for that. That was really powerful. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, you ask us to come to you in prayer. You ask us to hold our, each other in love and care to nurture the souls of not only ourselves, but everyone we encounter. You feed us and nurture us and guide us and are always with us. The spirit moves through us. We ask you for clarity, to find ways for us to move forward that has meaning that honors not only you, but our space in your world. We are your people gathered together, seeking ways to continue to be a blessing in our communities, in our homes, and in our own lives. We are your people. We trust and we live into the faith that we are never alone. You know the needs and the cares and the joys of each person in this place. And for those who are not with us today, send your blessings and let them know they're not forgotten. As we leave this place shortly, let us feel renewed, re-energized, and let us move into a world that you want us to co-create. In Jesus' name, amen. And our closing hymn is God who gives to life its goodness.
As we prepare to leave this place, cookies maybe, coffee for sure, <laughs> know that we're blessed, that God has called us into this place and God knows us each. Let's celebrate, let's go forward, and let's be God's people in the world. Amen. And bless you. Oh, before you run away, yeah. we had a Audrey this week. Uh, most of you know that Audrey and I are the nominees. <coughs> and uh, we Can you have not, for the mic? No. And we have not been in uh, contact with anyone or everyone. Uh, we, we've we realize the importance of talking to people and asking them if, if they'll stay on, and then we're going to try to do that. But hope, we hope that all of you will stay in those same positions for wherever you are. Right? For a pay raise? I will try to repeat this thing. <laughs> That's better. Hello? <laughs> Audrey and I are the nominating committee for this church, and if there are any folks listening from this church, uh, I know we have not been in contact with you, and it's kind of impolite not to speak to you and asking if you would stay on, so I guess this is a bit of a plea this morning to uh, stay on, if you will, and uh, we'll try to get a hold of everybody. We, are, we realize there are a couple of people who want off their committees. And uh, we will try to deal with that. But uh, what you see is what you get. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah. Would you maybe end up bringing in the suitcases of water trucks or cars or whatever? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just give me a second here to close this down. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. So there's no rush. Yep, I'll be just a sec. Okay. Oh, I got to stop. Hey, Bob. All right, today. Good boy. How's the new place working out?